this is Suman from uh, Midas. So I'm a structural engineer working at Midas R&D Mumbai. So today I'll be uh, talking about this topic, which is balanced cantilever bridge camber control. So I really want to give a big picture about the topic. How do you get the cambers? How do you calculate them? And how do you go about controlling the camber in ba balanced cantilever bridge? So I'll be providing you the insights for the camber calculations. So mostly I'm going to hit the title that is uh, the camber control, not going much into the balanced cantilever bridge modeling. So if you want a uh, balanced cantilever bridge, how you wanted to do in Midas, so you can watch some of our YouTube uh, videos or uh, the t uh, tutorials, the NB tutorials, you can go through them. So mostly I'll be speed, I'll be talking about camber and its control. All right. So first regarding the balanced cantilever bridge, just an introduction. So this is how a balanced cantilever bridge would look like. So you'll be having a PO and the PA table would be constructed first and then segment wise the deck would be erected like the left and the right would be simultaneously erected so that there won't be huge unbalanced movements. So you don't want it uh, unbalanced movements to be created at this PA locations. So you go one by one simultaneously on the left and right side of the PO. So that's the balance cantilever way of construction. So if you see into that so there are two methods of this deck construction of balance cantilever bridge. One is cast in place where the formwork is put in and it's connected to the previously ins installed concrete and allowed to cantilever freely. And the next permanent reinforcing steel and the supports all those would be installed and finally concrete is poured and it's cured. So that's why uh, one segment would be cured in this side and this side and they go about the next segment construction. So that's cast in place. And there is another method called precast segmental deck erection where the precast segments would be lifted to the position and they would be adjusted and thereby uh, they will be pre-stressed and, uh, and the new segments would be formed and the, and the cantilever erections would be performed. So these are the two methods of deck uh, erection sequences that generally follow. Uh, for balanced cantilever bridges, one is cast in place, now that is precast segment. So if you see the construction stages that you define in Midas or any other program, this is very much required uh, so because the structure evolves. Hence the structure analysis should be performed for each stage and the sectional stability for each stage must be checked. As you see in this erection sequence, so you have a peer table and these segments would be casted one after the other and the tendons would be stressed. Like you will be having the cantilever tendons or the continuity tendons. So to consider time dependent characteristic characteristics for the concrete and we need to consider the relaxation of the pre-stressing strands precisely. So the accumulated analysis results from the preceding construction stages are very much required for each subsequent construction stage. So we'll be carry forwarding the analysis results to the next stages. So that's how you make the accumulative construction stay analysis results. All right, I hope this is very clear. So let's go into the next slide where the main deformation problem is put on where you have the factors that are affecting the deformation prediction. So to provide a camber, so first first question is why do you provide a camber? So the camber is required to counter the deformations which are acting because of lot of parameters. So to counteract the uh, deformation and to provide a smooth camber where the traffic that is moving onto the bridge and the serviceability are not affected and the rider uh, on the bridge feels comfortable, so you need to provide a pre-camber. So before getting into the pre-camber, you should calculate the deformation. So the deformation prediction is very much important. So there are a number of factors that will be affecting the deformation prediction. So first one is creep. So as you know, creep is a time dependent deformation of the concrete under permanent load. So mind you, this is stress dependent. So the time histories of the stresses and the time becomes the important factors for determining the creep. 
so this is the complicated uh, behavior of the concrete material itself and there is an also one other material uh, behavior like shrinkage so this is a time dependent strain measured in an unloaded and unrestrained specimen at constant temperature that's what you call it as shrinkage of concrete so this is stress independent whereas the creep is stress dependent so next is the pre-stress losses so you also need to accurately capture the pre-stress losses that happens with the time like the frictional anchorage slip if you have a post tensioning system then you will be having the relaxation of the pre-stressing still so all these factors will heavily affect the deformations all right and next is the construction process so as as you know the balance cantilever bridges are erected in this sequence so this construction sequence and then chronological order of the casting of the segments is very much required and simulating the segment wise construction procedure according to the actual uh, true erection sequence from the site is required so the complex loading history needs to be considered coming to the concrete material so nowadays uh, most of these bridges are using uh, high strength concrete or they might be using lightweight concrete so these also affect the creep and shrinkage models that we will be considering so I'll be showing you some of the uh, creep and shrinkage models in the coming slides where this concrete material will affect those models and there would be time delays so sensitivity of the deformations to the variation in construction schedule and the procedures and the time delays so you also need to account for this because the creep and shrinkage all these parameters are time dependent so if you have any time loss so you need to take care about that in the analysis I hope this uh, slide is clear so this is these are the main factors the six factors will affect the deformations and the predictions so we need to take care about these factors so because of these factors what happens uh, if you have a segmental bridge balance cantilever bridge so you'll be having excessive sag at the middle so if a rider goes here then he'll feel very discomfort and the serviceability would be heavily affected and if you see the sequence where from the left side you are erecting and from the right side you are erecting there can be a mismatch there can be a <clears throat> a, uh, a deflection mismatch where uneven connection of free cantilevers can happen so you also need to predict this deformation and provide the pre camber so that these two will meet at the most of uh, most accurately at the same location to provide a smooth uh, transition so the so how to solve this two problems that's providing a pre camber is the solution so pre camber by definition is a designed elevation of the span plus the necessary over height so you so the design height can be straight and the necessary over height is what the pre camber can be so let's go to the next slide so what about the deformation solution that is provided by Midas so in Midas we always strive to provide innovative solutions which are practical and reliable so first one we have this factor called creep shrinkage and the compressed strength variation so these heavily affect the deformation prediction so we have in the program an accurate long-term prediction models for creep and shrinkage as per the code like CEB, FIP or ACI or any uh, or ASTO or uh, IRC also so we have as per code and you can also give the user defined values like for the creep coefficient and the shrinkage strains so the program will consider this creep coefficient and the shrinkage strains along with the compressed strength variation in the construction stage analysis so you can uh, refer to this very interesting paper uh, he's a pioneer he's a researcher who started uh, the creep and shrinkage uh, prediction models Basant 2001 so you can refer to his papers so compressive strength variation based on the maturity of the concrete member in the analysis can also be defined with respect to the code or you can uh, have a user defined values next in the program we have this construction stay analysis I hope most of the people are aware about the construction stay analysis in Midas civil so we'll be performing the construction stay analysis accurately taking into consideration all the factors 
which are involved in the balance cantilever construction process like the form workload how the uh, how the segments are erected and what's the time schedule of the two peers all those details will be including in the construction stay analysis and then thereby we can accurately capture the pre-stress losses even the relaxation loss of the tenants so Midas civil allows us to specify the construction stages and their composition in detail to reflect the true erection sequence of the construction so these two things are taken care of. so we also provide camber tools in Midas civil especially to cater the balance cantilever cambers so one is the tangent displaying calculation and the next one is the construction and the manufacture camber graphs and the tables can be readily uh, outputted and we can also provide this camber into the construction stages and check whether the desired level is reached or not so I'll be explaining you this in detail in the coming slides right so I wanted to give a brief idea about how uh, creep and shrinkage uh, is calculated in Midas the background so you see this graph which is uh, the shrinkage would be occurring when the concrete is poured suppose after three days if you start uh, thinking that the shrinkage would appear and then you'll have the immediate strains the elastic strains and then with respect to the time there can be a creep st uh, strains that would be accumulated and with the unload of some loads there can be a immediate recovery of the creep immediate recovery of the strains elastic strain recovery and the creep strain recovery so this is the overall figure that speaks about the creep and shrinkage so coming to Midas Midas uses a FEA approach with a time step method for calculating the creep strains so the total strain here has a components due to uh, elastic and creep strains due to shrinkage strains and also due to thermal strain so this thermal strain will come into picture when you provide the thermal inputs all right so coming to the creep strain so creep strain is the integration uh, of by the stress history so you integrate this whole stress history in a particular time period like the construction duration from 0 to t days of this construction duration you integrate the stress history with respect to the specific creep so the stress is applied in time steps keeping everything uh, every other thing constant in a particular small uh, time step as you can see in this stress history curve so then there would be uh, specific creep curves that would be generated with respect to the time at t each time interval the specific creep curves uh, can be obtained and then you superimpose this so you use linear superimposition uh, method to combine the stress history with the specific curves to get the total creep strain so it is an accumulative effect using the linear superposition and the total creep strain is calculated so the creep deformation here are summed over increasing stress history so you'll be calculating this incremental creep strain and then you will be adding upon them to get the total creep strain so uh, comprehensively the details are given in the analysis uh, manual of Midas civil so you can refer to that this is all about the creep coming to the shrinkage so you'll be having two type of sh uh, shrinkage strains so the total shrinkage is the addition of autogenous shrinkage plus the drying shrinkage strains so this is straightforward so you'll be getting this uh, formulas everything from the code or you can give a uh, user defined values to the program so coming to the big question why construction stay analysis so I put this slide to explain you the uh, difference when you do the construction stay analysis and without construction stay analysis so if you see the bending moment diagram due to self fate only for a balance cantilever bridge like this where the simultaneous analysis is performed not taking into consideration the sequence the construction sequence so you'll be getting this bending moment diagram so you can see here there is a sagging moment and the hogging moments when you take into consideration the sequential analysis there's a whole change of pattern of the bending moment diagram so there would be a lot of hogging moments here and the sagging moments would be reduced 
so this is what needs to be reflected in the program so we are we always need to bear in mind that we are analyzing a representative model but not the real structure because the model is wrong then your results are wrong so you should always take care about how the true erection sequence is taken uh, place in the site and you need to most probably simulate the same things in the program to get the correct results for the design so if the actual construction stage is halted for any reason then additional time steps can also be inserted into the respective stages that you I'll be showing you in the demo and I also want to point out that the weight of the traveling form work is also can be taken into account in the simulation because it would be having a significant influence on the total deformation all right so let's get into the two types of camber that is one is construction camber another is manufacturing camber so as you know the pre camber curve is the short plus long term deflection curve with the opposite sign so it shows the necessary over height for each segment over its design elevation where the formwork has to be positioned so you see here so you have this construction camber diagram so if you have a cantilever suppose which is divided into three segments which would be erected in three stages suppose first stage is only this cantilever portion second stage this would be stitched to the rest of the segment and third this part would be stitched to the rest of the structure so if you see the deformation profile so first this segment would be deflecting so this is because of the uh, load suppose a 10 kN load is 10 kN per meter load UDL is applied over here so not excluding the self weight so that because of that load if the deflection is delta 1 1 because of the loading at 1 there is a deflection at 1th position so if you draw a tangent line over here so you will be getting delta 2 1 and delta 3 1 because of the loading at 1 there would be a deflection at 2 and at so these are tangent displacements we call coming to the stage 2 when this segment is added then delta 2 2 is appeared and the segment is stitched at this location starting from this location so because of this load which is acting 10 kN per meter only in this segment there would be a deflection at delta 1 2 because of the load at 2 so this is delta 1 2 and similarly delta 3 2 Similarly, because of this load which is acting in this segment, there would be deflection at these points as well. So these are all nothing but the current stage displacements. So because of this current stage, there is a displacement here. And because of this uh, current stage and the current loading, there is a displacement which is would be occurring. And similarly at this part. So if you see the summation of the deflections at node 1 if you see at here so it would be the addition of this deflection plus this plus this at the 1th location at node 1 at node 2 we will not be adding the tangent displacement but we will be adding this two displacements because it's a construction camber so I'll be telling you why you will not be adding this uh, uh, in the next slides in, at node 3 for the construction process you take into consideration only delta 3 3 so if you see the construction uh, uh, figure if you draw it if the camber if you draw the deflections in the opposite sign so you'll be getting this curve so this is what a typical curve would look like for a construction camber so due to the nature of the segment wise construction in B uh, balance cantilever bridges the the deformation diagram will have the discontinuities at the segment borders so irrespective of the deformations of the already existing neighbor segments when a new segment is built uh, in place it has zero deformation at time zero and before loading so this generally corresponds to a situation in reality that the formwork for the subsequent cast segment is set at the prescribed elevation when the existing part of the cantilever has already undergone deformations so you'll adjust this cantilevers before erection 
so that's why you don't add this tangent displacement because you adjust this deformation start uh, this erection of this part starting from here at this locations so while uh, because of that adjustment this can only be possible in cast into two segments where the formwork can be adjusted and the concrete would be poured for the next segments so this is would be a typical example would be a balance cantilever bridge with a cast into two segments all right so coming to the uh, values if you see the values here suppose you got this values over here so these are the current the red ones are current stage displacements and the uh, subsequent the concurrent uh, displacements are given in blue so this would be the final construction camber values which are nothing but the deformations of the construction at the end of the construction stages you will be seeing this in the program so let me jump into the program now I'll show you one model where this has been a trial model I have developed so so you can see this is the cantilever so if you see the stage one so this part is like for five meters and this is the section coming to the CS2 there would be another segment of five meters which would be added to the rest of the structure similarly CS3 so I'll perform the analysis and I'll go to the results to check the deformations so if I see the deformations so I'll go to CS1 I'll turn on the legend turn on the undeformed shape turn on the values so you can see 4.789 is for this segment coming to the CS2 this is 64.965 and at this location so it's 27.017 coming to the CS3 so there is a kink over here this is uh, 257 so to check the current stage displacement so you have this option current step displacement for this to appear in the program you have to go to construction stay analysis and turn on this save output of current stage all right so then this uh, this option would be appearing so you can select that and if you go to CS1 so the current step and the, la and the stage displacements are same for CS1 because uh, there is no changes in the construction uh, in the structure so in CS2 if you see there is a change in the structure this segment is being added so in the current step only because of this loading which is occurring in this 5 meters one there is a subsequent uh, deformation here but if you turn off this and check so this is uh, the addition of the previous displacement which happened in CS1 so that's why it's 20 uh, that's why if you see here the previous displacement would be added to this all right so similarly in CS3 you can turn on the current step displacements and get this displacements which are because of the current step this is 257 and the concurrent uh, displacements are these two displacements now if you turn off this and click apply for CS3 there would be a summation of all these three values to this node and all these two values not taking into consideration of this tangent displacement so we'll be getting this 204 and this would be uh, uh, carry forwarded so this is what the construction camber is so in the program if you don't turn on this current step displacement and click apply so these are nothing but your uh, construction camber displacements which are actual at the end of the construction stage your deformations all right so now let's go to the next type of camber which is the manufacturing camber so this is used for the situations where the next element would be activated with J node but taking into consideration the tangent displacement also so if you see this uh, the same figure is repeated here so you have this deformations and their profile so if you see at node 1 so this is the summation of these three 
coming to node 2 this would take into consideration this tangent displacements which are given in this dot so these three deformations are this tangent deformations so we'll be considering this tangent deformations also uh, for, for the deformation calculations for manufacturing camber so for node 3 this is the summation of all these three values okay so to see the real displacements this is what we call as real displacements so generally for precast segments so you can't adjust uh, this segments individually like what you do in a cast in place formwork adjustment so that's why you have to start from here so that's why you need to consider this deflection tangent displacement also into consideration when you are dealing with a precast segmental bridge so if you see the manufacturing curve this is how it looks manufacturing camber curve so let me show you those values so these are the values that you got uh, after the construction stages but you wanted to uh, include the uh, tangent displacements also so these are the tangent displacements the program will give so if you consider these things so you'll be getting this final values which are different from the construction camber values because you are adding this tangent displacements so to get this tangent displacements so in the program you have to go to construction stage analysis control and turn on this initial tangent displacements for erector structures all right then the program will give you this option of state step real displacement so at cs1 so you can check this in cs2 there is a change of deformations considering the tangent displacements and in cs3 this is the value all right i hope everything is very clear so let's proceed so these are the tangent displacements and you'll be getting the manufacturing camber accordingly so in midas as i showed you there are uh, three uh, features that are available one is this construction stay analysis control so where you can directly get this tangent displacements and uh, you can apply this camber displacement to construction stages i'll be showing you this feature again coming to the general and fcm camber so if you perform the analysis then you can see these two options that are available in the program so one is this fcm camber control another is general camber control all right let's get into the program now i'll show you this in detail suppose you have a balanced cantilever bridge like this so we have the stage one stage two all these erections which are going on in a balanced cantilever fashion and there is a stitch in CS15 and if you see this CS17 where the 10,000 days duration is provided not act, not changing any of them is to capture the creep and shrinkage long term effects. So I have performed the analysis to save time. So these are all uh, there in the works tab you can see all the boundary conditions and the time dependent material properties so as i mentioned in the slides that you can give the user defined or you can uh, uh, select the code for the creep and shrinkage calculations so here you can select the ceb fip code all these codes are available and you can go to show calculation results to check your creep coefficient and the shrinkage strain so this is only for checking the program will take its own creep coefficient curve based on the construction stages because the duration start loading and loading would change for each construction stage and it's an uh, accumulative process so this is only for the verification that the program shows you this result all right so you can user def uh, you can specify the user defined as well and similarly the compressive strength variation so for the superstructure i've selected ceb fip 1990 and this is the compressive strength variation curve with respect to time so these are the time dependent material properties that i have given to, given in the program all right so let's go to the results now i'll go to results 
I'll go to deformations. I'll go to this stage which is suppose CS1. I'll click apply. So this is the deformation in Z direction. I'll turn on the legend. I'll turn on the undeformed line. So this is the dead load deformation with including the priestess. Uh, so this is the summation deformation. So if you want to see the dead load deformation, this is the dead load deformation. Including the priestess effect, creep and shrinkage effect is nothing but the summation one. So let's see the summation results. So this is how the summation deflections which are nothing but your construction camber. Alright. So till CS15, so this would be the deformation profile changes and at CS16, there is the key segments that are coming up to connect this FCM uh, ends and this intermediate one. So you can always switch to the current step displacement and check because of only the current loading of this construction stage, how is the displacement profile. And similarly, you can take into consideration the tangent displacements and check the deflections. So, so you can turn on the stage step real displacement and check how is the real displacements that are going up. So if you see in CS15, there is, uh, there is a, a difference in the tip of the cantilevers. So this is regarding the stage step real displacement. I hope everyone is clear about this current step displacement and the construction stage displacement and the stage step real displacement. All right. So now we accurately predicted the deformations for this balance cantilever bridge, taking into consideration all the formwork load, all the erection sequence, time dependent effects, everything has been considered. The pre-stress losses are also being considered. So we assume that the deformations are, suf uh, are with uh, sufficient accuracy. So we'll proceed for providing the camber. For that, we go to the camber and click on this FCM camber. So go to FCM camber control. So the program will ask you for this, uh, for this groups, for this element group of the bridge girder, support node group, and the key segment element group. So I'll go to group. So I see that no uh, groups are defined here. So I'll unlock the model. So I'll define a bridge girder group. So I'll select the superstructure and I'll drag and drop this bridge girder group. So you see node 80, node 83 nodes and 82 elements have been assigned. So you can double click and cross check. So I'll add another group which is your support node. So if you see here for a balance cantilever superstructure, we are connecting this with a rigid link. So these nodes are your support nodes. So we need to select this as a support nodes because your cambers would start from here. So I'll select this support. So this support nodes are selected. I'll drag and drop. So these are six nodes. So actual supports are this ones. Now I'll add another group which is key segment. So I'll select all these key segments. I'll uh, activate them. Select all. I'll just drag and drop. So the key segments, support nodes and the bridge girder uh, groups are created. Now I'll go, I'll no need to perform the analysis again. So I can go to camber, FCM camber, click on this FCM camber control, 
Now I'll select the bridge girder group which I have recently created and the support nodes and the key segment locations. That group I'll click OK. So now I can directly go to FCM Camber and click on FCM Camber Graph View. So you can select any load case that you want either for dead load or all this FX summation. So I'll select summation that you generally take. Click OK. So this is the FCM camber for a balanced cantilever bridge. So this is the construction camber for a cast in place uh, balanced cantilever construction method. So you generally take this camber, construction camber into account. So you see at this uh, two peer locations and uh, uh, at the intermediate key segment and here at the key segments there are kinks. These are all because of the adjustment of the form work. So you can zoom in in the program. So you can right click and zoom out and check these values. So you can see this is the node numbers and these are the camber in mm that you provide. So I'll zoom out all. So this would be the opposite of the deformation. Let me cross check that. So you can go to CS17 which is the end of the construction stage. Go to last step. Click apply. So this is the un undeformed one. Let me turn on the nodes. Yes. So see here, the, this is uh, uh, coming down here and you provide upward camber. So this would be the opposite of the deformation. All right, I hope the FCM camber is, uh, is very clear. Coming to the general camber, you also have this general camber control. So this is for uh, uh, for a, uh, any other type of bridge. So for a balanced cantilever bridge especially, we have provided a separate FCM camber and its FCM camber table also. So you can turn on the table and check the values. So in the nodes, so you see at the seventh node, so in each construction stage, the camber needs to be provided. So you can get this in terms of pages. So as the columns are huge, like the length of the bridge is huge, so we have this in pages. So you can directly copy paste this in the Excel and you can use it and cross check them. All right. So this is the camber tree. So you can get these values. So these are nothing but your deformations. All right. So let's go to the general camber. So in general camber, this is for uh, any other bridge like if uh, F FSM bridge like fully full staging method bridge where you need the camber to be considered. So then you can select this direction of the construction and select your bridge girder group. Okay, and then you can get the curves. I'll go to general camber and click on general camber graph. So here you will be getting the construction camber curve as well as the manufacturing camber curve. So we can also get in tabular format. So this is the construction camber tree and this is the manufacturing camber tree. So these are all the camber values where the tangent deformations are also taken into consideration for the manufacturing camber. All right. So I hope these two uh, uh, these two options are very clear. Coming to the next option we have is in Midas we have this camber for construction stages. So you can go to this option load construction stage and click on camber for CS. So you can directly input the camber to the construction stages. So I'll close this tabs. So I'll go to load, click on camber for construction stage. And here you have generated the FCM camber values beforehand after the analysis and after this grouping, you got this FCM camber values. Now if you wanted to provide this to the superstructure, so you can go to initial view. Just lock and unlock. 
go to construction stage came for CS now I'll select the bridge girder group now I'll directly select this deformation curve deformation camber or you can specify the user defined maximum camber start and end node you provide and then you give the maximum camber so the program will interpolate the in between cambers or you can actually specify for each node what is the camber so that these options are all there so when you pick this deformation camber the previously calculated FCM camber values would be automatically provided at their respective node locations so I'll click apply so you can click this three dot button to check the camber values so these are the, all the values that have been obtained from the results so this has been applied to the respective nodes at the uh, in the construction stages all right so for this to check you need to go to analysis go to construction stage so the program uh, uh, needs to apply this camber displacement to construction stage so you have to turn this option and we can rerun generally you don't need to rerun because you can always uh, keep all those options turned on and once you perform the analysis you can adjust the campus but here I forgot to uh, tick in that uh, parameter so it will just take a couple of minutes So it just you can appreciate the solver speed as well here. It just took 30 seconds. That's a great news. Okay, I'll go to deformation. I'll go to end construction stage. Summation. Click apply. So this is the deformation, and you can see this current step and the stage step stage step real displacement. Now, when you turn on that uh, the parameter that in the construction stage analysis control. So you'll be getting this option as well where include camber displacement. So the deformation curve the figure will show you including the camber displacement. So let me turn on the legend click apply. So you see the deformations which are in DZ. So the camber I've applied only in DZ direction. So in the last step so you can see it's almost straight. So the deformations have, have come up to the level that we required. So this is how you can directly apply the cambers to the construction stages and check. All right. So let me get back to the presentation. Let me summarize what we have discussed. So first is this parameters where you'll uh, get to know all this initial tangent displacements and applying the camber displacement to the CS where you can specifically generate the FCM camber as well as the general camber. So you can get them in the graph or in the table format directly and you can apply this to the construction stages. So application of pre-camber to CS stages you can bring the superstructure to a desired level and cross check in each construction stage whether you are satisfying it. All right. So I hope uh, I have addressed many issues of Camber. Hope you enjoy the presentation. Now I can take your queries. So you can type in in the questions box if you have any queries. You can type in in the questions box. Yeah, uh, this video would be put up on the YouTube, so you can watch. So, so some of the people are asking regarding this presentation will be shared. So the video would be put up, and the slides uh, will also be kept. Yeah, I'll share the slides with you.
So if you have any questions, you can type in in the questions box. Okay. Thanks. It was nicely explained. Okay. Thank you. So one question from Vijay Kumar. It's that uh, when the shrinkage loss taken in into account, whether it's three days or ten days. So if you see in the program, so you can uh, go to the properties and go to the creep and shrinkage. And here you have this days that you give age of concrete at the beginning of the shrinkage. Whether you wanted it to be three days or ten days is up to you. So you can select this start uh, start age of the shrinkage. All right. So uh, one more question from Manuel. Uh, he's asked, Mr. Manuel, like, are the formwork travelers or lifting frames included in your analysis? Uh, so we have given a full freedom for you to manipulate your construction stages. So if you have any formwork or lifting frames that are especially for your bridge project, you can include that in the program. Suppose in CS2, there might be uh, here we have taken into consideration this loads. So you generally apply it as a nodal loads. So you can manipulate these values according to your uh, direct train loads. So you can actually for simulate the true erection sequence of the balance cantilever bridge in the program. So I'll go to this creep shrinkage curve. So it's with three days. Yes, uh, another question, uh, the follow-up question that you see only 10 days. So when you turn on this shrinkage, so I can give this 3 and click redraw graph. All right. So I can change this and check. But the program will take this value internally. This is just to show you the curve and its behavior for this uh, parameters. Okay. So another question from Himanshu, like uh, Mr. Himanshu, that the difference between manufacturing chamber and the construction chamber. So this is a bit confusing. So I'll try to explain in simple words. So if you see the construction chamber here, so you got these values from the program. So in the construction chamber, you don't account this tangent displacements. These three values which are there, you don't consider. So because of this construction sequence, there is a change in deformations. So that you will be considering without considering this tangent displacements. That is called as construction chamber. So you can see this formula. But if you see in the manufacturing chamber, for this displacement at this node 2 location, you also will consider this green ones, which are nothing but your tangent displacements. So generally in precast segments, you don't have the uh, adjustment. You don't have that allowance to adjust this tangent displacement. So that's why you need to consider this in the camber. So that's why it's called as manufacturing camber. All right. Uh, there's another question from uh, Mr. Rakesh. What is meant by sequential analysis and simultaneous analysis? See, simultaneous analysis is nothing but you do. You are not considering this construction stages. Just you are considering this bridge and applying all the loads, and you'll be getting a bending moment diagram, which is nothing but your continuous bridge and ana structure analysis. So in this sequence, you have a difference. So that's what I explained in this slide. So this is without taking into consideration the construction stay analysis. This is with construction stay analysis. So there would be a difference in the bending moment pattern. All right, there are a lot of questions coming up. Uh, actually, we are running sh short of time. 
so if you have any queries so you can write to us at uh, global support at the Midas user dot com so if you have any queries you can visit this so you'll be having that FAQs and a lot of information is provided to enhance the uh, uh, user user interface so you have the min the basic questions are given in this site so you can refer that frequently asked questions or if not you can uh, raise a ticket so we'll be get back to you in 24 hours so we'll be happy to help you out over that site all right so thank you very much hope you have enjoyed the presentation have a good day